Word. Alright, so this is your boy Zigzag here. And, uh... Yeah, there's just a lot that's gonna be emoted here. So, uh... We'll see where we go. I, I don't wanna really have a, uh... <laughs> a lesson plan or, or a, uh... A map, really. It's just... It's just the flow, so so we we'll see where we go. That's that's how we do. So this is the first video um, of four. I think he just released, and um, even before I started this, I realized in watching a little bit of Zin's uh, some of his videos that you know. I'm I'm not gonna watch these things and, and like eat them up like all at once because uh, it, it's it's very much an attunement process here that we're going through. So as we need things, we will find things and absorb things as we are ready to absorb them. We're not always ready to to be a sponge and absorb and absorb and absorb. That's that's not the point because if that was the case, we would never. Uh, transmute and, and uh, understand what, what what we are absorbing. So I watched uh, the first video here of his, and man, fucking fucking magic, like. I feel like every time I watch uh, a zigzag or a zen video, I'm just sitting there like nodding my head <laughs> up and down the whole fucking time. Yup, 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 yes, yes. Uh. So I'll just make a video real here, real, real quick here uh, with the first one of zigs. And and touch upon some things, uh, much like uh, in one of Zen's videos that he released, like how he relayed the message of like leapfrogging, like using things as uh, stepping stones, but not 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 necessarily stepping stones, you know, as an egotistical thing to leave. Uh, leave behind uh, and to spring forth into some kind of bullshit ego crap but to uh every time you you leapfrog some from something of of uh gnosis you integrate this is a leapfrogging of integration here that we're going through And uh, with with the people I vibe with on on the tubes, um, the things that I hear you speaking about, the things that I feel you <laughs> feeling about, um, it, it's really beyond words. It, it's fucking. It's to the point where it's like, of course, it's it's not. It's not even a surprise. I mean, it never was, but I mean, I mean, before I connected with people who who felt like you guys feel, it was few and far between uh, the the synchronicities and the reverberations that were uh, shared and mirrored back in kind. But with you guys, it's it's instantaneous. I I don't I don't even need to see anything that you put out. I I can just feel. And and it's fucking. Uh, It's what it's all about, really. There's just so many places right now that my uh, my 
my feelings, my my attention and intentions are, are, are being pulled towards. It's, it's an interesting act right now, a balancing act. I, I, like I'm, I'm on a tightrope, but uh, it's it's not tight. <laughs> It's very loose, but I'm the one tightening it. And this is the fucking point here. We are the ones tightening our thoughts, our mentality, our reality. This is the whole fucking point, basically, of why we are fucking putting shit out here. To not only strengthen each other, but to remind Of what you are doing to yourself in every single moment. Whether you realize it or not. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yes. <laughs> uh, let me let, let me show what we are working with here. Before we go any further. All right, it, it's a uh, harvest time, right? Or, or, or it was. It always is. As we continue to uh, cultivate. And. Refine. We harvest from this refinement. Do you see? Do you see how this works now? We go through this stuff, these deep level emotions, these deep level uh, experiences, so that we can integrate, transmute, understand, and refine. And then we can begin to transmit in a, in a ability with, with a little bit more... Uh, of course, even though these are serious things, levity and clarity of the purity of our direct experience in a clear communion and communication of this. I mean, I don't know if maybe I must have heard the song in the background somewhere or if I didn't, but whatever it may be, okay? Um, the song, in and of itself, you see, I'm, I'm watching a, a video that was so... I mean, I've watched it before, but it's, it was so powerful to me. And I actually enjoyed it so much. It gave me goosebumps because I've watched it before, but for some reason, the message was so much more powerful now than it ever was before. Exactly. And I'll just go ahead and say I have I have the fucking uh, video tweaked here to where uh, he he's he appears as Red Man, <laughs> but basically I just uh, you know, made the lighting a little bit lower so this this uh, phone can, can uh, you know not freak the fuck out with the lighting and with the uh, vibrations, which I'm sure it will, anyways. But yes, um, how many times do we like uh, go back upon um, things we have already touched upon? But because we do so with a new level of awareness, a new vantage point, we, we see things from, from a whole different perspective, from a more holistic and complete perspective. Maybe not absolutely, like we're not... Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not, you know, you don't want to engage the ego so much that you think you you are absolutely complete because then you don't have anywhere else, you don't have anywhere else to go. So 
So you, you need to realize your limitations. Realize that you are limitless, but because of, you know, this shit that we have gone through for a long fucking time that's ingrained in our DNA, it takes some time and awareness to realize how to integrate, how to transmute, how to navigate up and out of it, and and also back into it, because this is an Ouroboros. But this is also why, like, as people wake up, they uh, quote unquote wake up. <laughs> are, are you woke, bro? They uh, the things that entertained them previously, um, they are not drawn towards these things anymore because they do not. Those things do not speak to them like, you know, other things do. The things that they now decide to fill their uh, space with or to engage with and this is the as within so without and the the cleaner that you get inside and this obviously as, as I always say this ties it back into fasting and utilizing your own waters the cleaner you get inside the, the more access you, you get with the uh, hydration, which is what the Oran does. It asks in certain places that even distilled water, I feel like, will not access. Because your own Oran has the Mem Ori already there. And so whenever you loop it, you go into fucking super fucking Saiyan mode. <laughs> And, uh, shout out to fucking, uh, We Do Shivambu. Whenever you loop your orange so much, your hair turns fucking black back to blonde. Just go back to fucking We Do's videos. He, he fucking did the damn thing, alright? Um, I'll link that video in the description because I think uh, whoever watches this video, it, it, it's going to make a lot of sense. Now, these songs that come into your mind, you know what I mean? Like we, we, we hear, I had, you see, when you hear the words, I had the time of my life, okay? You're, you're, you should always be having the time of your life. And I'm going to skip around here uh, probably quite a bit to find the points that I want to find. But, uh, absolutely, like, the time in your life, uh, hmm. well, first of all, like, you have to go into the spells and the spellings and realize there is no time, there is only emitting, and there is only choice, so, uh, what you choose to, to engage, to, to entertain, is what you choose to entrain, into your subconscious, your psyche, until you realize, you know, you dive into the deeper layers and levels, and this goes into what we're going to be getting into, which is the uh, dream state. Also, a shout out to uh, shit. <laughs> what is it? Uh, cymatics of Earth, or I think that's it. Um, yeah, so with the dream state, so like we're going to be getting into that and uh, some some cues and clues here to, to help you along your way inside. But with the music, I, I, and this brings back a memory uh, of for me. Of uh, trying to get someone to, to meditate and distill their mind. And every time that they did, they said that they heard a different song play. Start playing and going, you know, on repeat. 
and uh, this is this is kind of like the first threshold or barrier with meditation is to quiet the mind, distill the mind, to to go out of thought, so that you can go back into the breath, into the no mind. And and this is like this is big, even though this is a first threshold and barrier, this is huge. This uh is is disconnecting from the loops that, that most people are caught up in. So if you can just do this very simple thing of stilling the mind, accessing no thought, that that's fucking crazy huge. Because most people cannot ever do that. Most people in the modern day human will never have a moment where they're not constantly caught up in thought. Do you know how fucking sad that is? That that really like hurts me to say that. It really fucking hurts me, dude. And, and this is uh the the, the design uh, how perfected this indoctrination system has has become. Because uh, it's it's an infection. The indoctrination system is an infection. It doesn't end. It doesn't even begin with with the schooling. It begins with the fucking parenting. The indoctrinated parents give birth to indoctrinated children. Even without like any, any kind of uh, education system ha having been implemented onto them, the implementation and the indoctrination is immediate. First of all, with the disconnection of uh, homeland, of being connected with nature and your own little place on the earth, your own little glade. Instead, you are brought up in an encapsulated uh, system. You are brought into the world uh, in a cube um, with, with a whole bunch of artificial lights to blind you and uh, oh, uh, no, no, really no smells to, to, to allow you to open up to the ethers and the uh, pollens and the essences of, of nature. Instead, you are you are brought up in blinding white light and a chemical smell, and then you are most likely slapped on on the bottom. So that you uh, are made aware that this is not going to be enjoyable. You're going to go through some shit here. And welcome to your living hell. And if you don't cry the first time, or the second time, or the third slap. Well, other measures are taken. And then your umbilical cord is cut instead of being allowed to uh, naturally fall off. And this is if you are lucky enough to have um, a quote-unquote natural birth and not be cesarean or have a C-section, which is yours truly here. But that's for a very specific reason. I I called forth a C-section so that I wasn't exposed to other things. You see, the, the things that uh, surround themselves around me, if they are not of a uh, sufficient clarity and purity, they disintegrate. So this is what's happened with 
everything in my life, including the hospital I was born in, it's no longer there. Oh, and it was called Grim. <laughs> How cute. Time basically is your life, okay? Uh, it's, it's your lifespan, whatever, how, however long you, you last here. Uh, and what you do with your time, your space, you know, the moment that you're here and um, the appreciation you have for whatever is in your in your space now we are all over here sometimes and we tend to you know want to judge and hate each other and whatnot and you know and we, when you look at uh you know people now even in the spiritual movement they want to you know have these experiences and uh you know they, they want to they want to talk to aliens and whatever but what's funny is is that uh they, they won't talk to their own neighbor, like their immediate neighbor, you know? That's beautiful. And I really appreciate you saying that stuff because uh, this is observable. Like, you can you can just fucking open your eyes up a little bit and you can observe this. Like, it's pretty fucking rare that, uh, you know, people are very neighborly at all. I mean, it's hard to be whenever you're, you are... Uh, either living in houses or living in uh, apartments where there's just so much of a disconnect, so much of a not relating. And it all ties back down to how you relate with, with everything around you, how, how you relate with yourself first and foremost. And the more work you do within, like, it's, you're going to have more connections without. That's just how this shit works. Whenever you reconnect within, um, it's a reflection without. So a lot of you, why you are tapping into things outside of you right now is because of the things that you are feeling, that you have been feeling, that you have felt. So this 2020 vision is a culmination It's, it's, it's a 2020 clarity of uh, it. The tw the the t yeah, you gotta get to the fucking 20 within and then you, you see it reflected without that's the 2020 all right as within so without period <laughs> I mean and I've noticed this because I, I mean I've been at, at moments where you know people literally hate on each other and they live next door but yet let's, let's see if we can get to the place I I I, I, here we go and emotions is very, very strong. You see, this is the thing. It don't matter how you're feeling, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. The fact is that you're feeling. That's that's the main thing. And this yeah. is one thing I've noticed. I actually have been, when I fasted, I, I ate real clean, you know what I mean? Did the whole thing. I was real disciplined. And then I decided to just pig out. But I wanted to see a big deal. I wanted to see the night and day change of it. Because I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. What a coincidence. Cause that's what I've been doing for a, uh, oh my, come on, <laughs> for, for about, uh, three years, I've been doing the night and day thing until very recently. And this is the first time that I've, uh, talked about really how I've uh, switched it up. Because I would do uh, my fast with the moon, moon cycles 
And so it was 15 days on, 15 days off until I uh, reached a point where, I don't know, I just listened to my body. My, hmm, this is uh, pretty deep. It wasn't even just listening to my body. It was a, a, a such a such a fine level of uh, refinement and attunement that what I was doing in, in exertion, my body was telling me, "You need to keep up a level of uh, intake." So that you can keep up with this level of uh, exertion, and and so that's that's why my my fasts have changed for three fucking years. Finally, my 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 uh, <laughs> my shit's changed, and uh, the the product of this is that. Uh, my body is is transforming like like fucking crazy. I, I've never uh, experienced this level of strength or agility or <coughs> oh, I breathed in <laughs> as I was trying to swallow uh, some saliva or uh Stamina. <laughs> and then that's the huge thing. Uh, to have the stamina. Like we can have strength. We can have. Uh, fortitude. Or, or willpower. Or a mentality. And uh, that will last for so long. But the lasting power. Is where it's at. The stamina. And this is like. The divine. Fucking essence of testing yourself dedicating yourself cultivating a, a, a discernment practice whatever it may be manifest in so whenever we engage deep level fast we are cultivating a new awareness A new level of integration. But uh, it's push and pull here, all right? It's uh, wax on, wax off. So we go through what we need to go through, and then. Uh, we come out the other side and then we realize that we oh, sometimes we got to go through it again to, to learn what we what we missed the first time so I want to, I'm at the point now where I fasted so much where to where I this is hard to put into words um, it's almost like I'm always in a fasted state uh, whether whatever I put in my body, the integration is uh, very is is much more immediate than than anywhere that that it has been in the past for me. Especially because I'm doing a lot of uh, exertion. I'll just put it like I'll just I'll just keep it right there. Exertion. So this uh the things being integrated are being transmuted um in a much more refined process. This also ties back into fermentation. Utilizing your own saliva, utilizing your own bacterium, and cultivating a bacterium 
to where you can add it to certain foods so that it's already right there ready for you to digest and integrate and if you don't need you know that much then your body is is going to expel it uh, in, in a quicker process which is also the beauty of fermentation it's it's a process of allowing you to uh, integrate and digest and absorb on a deeper level but also to expel the things that aren't needed or if the things that are in excess this is uh, this is like the beauty and the quintessential <laughs> essence of fasting and really like refining what's going on your processes to absorb more of what you really need and to expel more of what you really don't need and your body will fucking transform just in that process there's there's many fucking layers and levels of this shit and whenever you start to really tap into supreme <laughs> deities as in diet and supreme exertion and exercise uh, it's a whole new fucking world you start to tap into areas and avenues and energies that you never thought you, you never knew was there before okay so enough of that <laughs> let's 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 get back into this whenever you drink stimulants such as coffee or alcohol and when you get off of it for a while and then you go back and do it again it feels fucking crazy like it, it feels like you're, you're drunker and you're more stimulated with the caffeine because you've been off of it for a while because you're yes and this is also something that happens whenever we fast from things you know, fasting is a, a umbrella term you can fast from literally anything and everything it just, just means um not putting something into your body that, that you had before, fasting from it. So the uh, the caffeine or the stimulants, like fasting from that, and then once you get back into it or reintegrate it, it's going to be like a new fucking level, uh, another gunshot. So uh, utilize it. And this is the thing, like with uh, any kind of stimulant or, or whatever, um, e even with psychedelics or, or marijuana. Like I, I utilize fucking marijuana, and whenever I see all the all these, st oh my god, I see so many stoners out here. I'm like, dude, you gotta utilize this shit. Do something with it. Don't just get stoned to get stoned, and then you know munch out, and then just be a fucking potato, like. Utilize it, like stimulate. Utilize it to stimulate your mind. Utilize it to stimulate your body. Do something with it. You don't need to fucking smoke up and go crazy. Just do a little bit until you feel good, and then do something with it. You don't need to even do all that much. And this is the beauty of this refinement process: is that we realize that we how much of, of things that we really need and then realizing that we don't really need all that much of anything to be good to thrive my got uh gotten used to not having it right so Okay, so yeah, I, and with alcohol, um, whenever you don't have alcohol, whenever, if you reach a point where, you know, you you are used to alcohol, and it took a long period of time for my uh, beingness and this embodiment to actually adapt and become adept with alcohol, because for a long time, I was just, uh, marijuana I'd, 
I, I didn't have any kind of benefit or any use for alcohol. And then uh, I started to taste it. <laughs> you, you know, we, we get the taste and the itch, so to speak. But I also, uh, because of the inner work I already did, I knew where to navigate into a, a place to how, how I would utilize the, the effect. Integrate. And alcohol is a very tricky thing because it can uh, lure you in and make you want to uh, engage it more and more. And this has everything to do with the fact that it is so widespread. So if you do uh, decide to utilize the drink and you are able to transmute it and recognize the power of it, but also the danger as in, you know, like I said, you can get caught up within it, with within everything, of course, but, uh, this is a huge part of shamanics is integrating the the things that are collectively being integrated and and used to basically control people integrating these chemicals and these substances and transmuting them inside of ourselves is having a pretty profound effect collectively I'm not necessarily saying that it changes the uh, chemical structure of the human form or uh, the chemical structure of uh, the process that's happening inside. But what I am saying is it's giving more and more of a clearer vantage point and access point to feel into what what people really want, why they are doing things, what they really want to feel. And then they have the choice. It's all it's all a choice. But with alcohol, if you don't do it for a while and and you get back into it, it's very fucking trippy and psychedelic. Especially after you fasted for a while and get back into it. You realize that, you know, you drink one beer and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck did this just do to me? And that's how it should be. With with everything. We should, we should be that sensitive to things. And uh, a lot of people out here are like, oh, I'll, I'll drink you under the table. Oh, I'll smoke you fucking... Oh my god, I can I can smoke you smoke you up and just fucking take way more than you can. Oh my god, and you can't even handle your shit. And I'm always like, dude, like you want to be sensitive to things so that you're not dependent upon them. But like so few people even get what the fuck I'm saying. It's like uh just it's not even I don't even make it a point really anymore because it's just like you obviously are so um, you know, uh, caught up in the sauce that uh, you're not really going to hear this, these things and this of course ties back into like whenever we're ready for uh, to integrate things that's whenever we're really going to have the uh, essence and the knowledge seep into our experience. Otherwise, we're just uh, sitting there, like, uh, looping over and over on the surface, the loop programs, and uh, shying away from uh, the, the deeper level shite. Food, surprisingly, I'll tell you right now, man, I woke up like if I had a hangover. I woke up as if I had a hangover, all right, which is fucking crazy, all right, and it makes all the sense in the world how, you know, sugars and then if your stomach exactly. expands a little bit more, you know, the alcohol that that's created in there. And unfortunately, most people fucking, 
wake up like this because they're they're hung over from from what from from the bullshit chemicals their body processing the shit um and then also like realizing that you know your your mind is also trying to integrate uh all the subtleties of what you have ingested into you all of the thoughts of all of the chemicals of all of the plants of all of the probably animals for most people all of that mentality your body's trying to process that and then most people don't get very restful sleep they don't get enough sleep so they wake up tired and whenever you fast you you uh integrate deeply so so it's almost like you're uh sleeping while you're awake in in, in a lot of instances uh the daydream happens and uh you, you just integrate so you don't need a lot of sleep whenever you're fasting because you're doing what your body is doing already while it's sleeping you're you're helping your body out quite a bit whenever you fast out of and those are things that stimulate you right those are the things that that created a strong stimulation for you right so like music for example there's songs that you may hear from back in the day and they bring back a certain memory a certain memory of like a uh, uh, an ex that you may have had or a certain memory that you may have had in a vacation that was a, a really really good memory but you see here's the here's the thing though it's not to get stuck in that moment in the past it's literally you exactly. bring and carry that emotion here and use it to what you're doing in your now moment but ah i'm so glad <laughs> i just happened upon that and this is the thing about you know the the word nostalgia like and i i i do not have a uh, positive um engagement with that word really because uh i just see people like getting caught up like 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 Zeke just said getting caught up and not moving forward and and transmuting but I have also, you know, uh, part of this process of refinement is, is being able to see things for, for in a clear essence and, and sense. So, like, um, I'm I'm able to um, feel things of the past, or or being like uh, nostalgic about things and not get caught up in it, but in enjoying the moment of the recollection that's really what nostalgia is it's a, a moment of recollection of a past remembrance and then reintegrating that into your now and that's where that's that's the step that most people don't do is the reintegration Seeing where you've been, realizing where you are, not necessarily seeing where you're going as much as feeling what you've been through, feeling where you want to be, allowing that reality to be. That's, that's true magic. Because you are the fucking magic. You're fucking, uh, the very fact that you exist is, uh, the highest form of magic that you <laughs> can ever come to understand. The power that you have in every little moment, every little breath that you take, every little word not even word, but sound that you emote. 
is the most magical thing in the universe. Every time you have a thought, every time you have the most subtlest of sounds, that is the most profound thing that happens. <laughs> and that may sound crazy, but but once you realize that That is the case. It is. It's fucking beautiful. You you start to tap into the orchestra that uh, all of humanity is creating. You start to tap into the waveform, the sine wave, the breath, the spirit. You start to surf and swim within it. Instead of being caught up within uh, mixed up signals. And emotions that you don't quite understand and understand why they are there. What they are trying to tell you. Why are we getting caught up within certain things. This refinement process is a clearing. It's a uh, understanding of the signal, what the sign, what what our emotions are really trying to tell us. And it, yes, it's difficult whenever we are caught up in you know day to day shit, the external stuff. Uh, we have certain situations happen, and we are caught up within that. And then we are, you know, our our emotions are taken away into that. But whenever you are able to draw your emotions back inside. And this isn't, this isn't the same thing as, you know, numbing yourself or, or seeming like you're, you don't care. And you will get accused of this day in and day out. Whenever you really start to tap into it. It, and take back your control. Oh, you just don't care. Oh, you, you just don't give a shit. No, you're just misrepresenting. You're misinterpreting how I'm integrating, how I am experiencing. I see things for how they are. And I see well beyond them. And deeply inside them to the root causalities. And into the future potentialities from where these roots are going to grow and sprout and have fruits. So this is all a process here. Like in every little moment we, we have this engagement of where are the roots? Where are they going to potentially bring forth fruits? What are those fruits going to look like? How do I navigate all this? This is the refinement process. Bang. And all of a sudden I get, uh, you know, that sleep paralysis that happens. Now, before I would just be like, okay, no, I, I already, like I would fight the sleep paralysis to get out and then it would last longer. But then there's, there's the times where I said, no, I'm going to relax because I know it's sleep paralysis. So I know that if I just relax, It'll just go, it'll go away and, I, and I'll just wake up. See, this time I did it different. I, I, my, I set my intention to come out of body because I knew that once you have sleep paralysis, you're about to come out of body. So, you know, I had perfect I with the, timing. Like some noises in your ear, like you're in a hole in a vortex and in like a black hole. It's like a... a ah, that's so fucking perfect, dude. And like at the beginning, I was talking about with, with, with the dream stuff. Um, that's exactly what happens, and, uh, well, sound-wise, but, uh, it's a vibration, so, like, uh, your, your body starts to vibrate very intensely, and then it, it goes, um, up into your, your brain and into the mental, and, uh, then you start to hear, like, these, these sounds, like, like you just did, <laughs> But if you write it out, you you go directly into the dream, and you go in directly into a lucid dream. 
um, until you're able to, you know, go directly into a, um, either like a, a astral travel or remote viewing type of experience. But at first, it's going to be directly into a dream state and directly into like a, a lucid dream state. Crazy loud, you know, it sounds like an airplane. So I. Yep, and it also sounds like. A helicopter and this is something that you will experience whenever you start to uh, tap into deep level meditations and you are uh, out in nature yeah <laughs> I, I won't get too far into that but I'll just say that uh, whenever I go out in nature and uh, go go deep in state um, without fail, a helicopter flies directly over me every single time. A disturbance in the forest. So we're going to skip to the end of this so I don't make this too long. Frederick Nietzsche. Ah, oh, yes, yes. So give me a second. Yes. All right. So the first one is those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane <laughs> by those who could not hear the music. <laughs> Frederick Nietzsche. Nietzsche. I don't know what, what his last name is. <laughs> Nietzsche. Uh, the first philosopher that I ever uh, got into. Because um, through through the fucking bullshit indoctrination system, I found this 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 uh, this dude, and I read some of his uh, quotes or, or some of the things that were attached or associated with him, and I was like, oh my god, uh, I, I was fucking in love with it. Time of your life, you're not having a good time out here. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Beautiful. Made a lot of sense. Those who were seen dancing were thought Damn. to be insane here we go. by those who could not hear the music. Frederick Nietzsche. Nietzsche. I don't know what, what his last mm -hmm. name is. But you'll see it in the He also is depicted with a master stash, which, which I'm. I'm getting more and more compliments on my stash. <laughs> Just all my all my airs, hairs. But yes, this is fucking beautiful, dude. Like people aren't gonna understand like why you are dancing, how you are dancing, how you are able to like be in a state of uh, bliss or pleasure or jubilation. And uh, we have to realize like why this is. Like, um, all of the shit of the world, the, the, <laughs> the scripts and the conscripts and, and the structure, the system that has been set up, uh, the manipulation, the level of degradation that collectively that we are in. And yes, like people can, like you can, you can go on YouTube or where, wherever the fuck ever and see these people having their time of their lives and living this extravagant, like, beautiful, like, absolutely amazing life. But that, you know, don't let that distract you necessarily from how everyone, how all, the majority of other people are living. Let it, uh, speak to you and enliven you and, uh, remind you of potentialities but also let it speak to you in a way of hey obviously these people do not understand and understand what's going on collectively but 
good for them for for fucking living their life and being uh you know um you could say happy but whenever you really look into their eyes and, and feel beyond you know the, the fucking uh even beyond what they're willing to put out like you, you can see collect the collective uh pull in the fall within everyone's eyes everyone's hearts except for maybe the ones that don't pretend that it doesn't exist there the ones that not necessarily embrace it but that feel it and integrate and are willing to dive down deep inside and transmute to go to the darkest darks the, the deepest depths and to come out still living shout out to all of you that can do that that have uh, thought about or even decided that, you know, they fuck this shit, fuck this shit, this shit's fucked up, so uh, I'm piecing out, or I'm checking out. And I'm talking from experience. Not that I have tried and failed, but I tried at a very, very, very fucking young age. Way too young to even be thinking about these things. But because of uh, the lack of love that I had from my parents, I uh, decided to cut this thing out of, um, in the center of my chest that was uh, causing me so much pain because that was that was going to be way more uh, better um, that kind of release than to go through the hurt of not feeling a love from the people that brought you into the world and I'm not I'm talking for a collective here because most most everyone is going to feel this even if they aren't cognizant of this. Most people are not brought into the world nowadays with intent. And so on some level they feel that. A video. And then appear weak when you are strong and strong when you are weak. Shun Tzu. The art of war. Now, how that's fucking beautiful. And uh, a lot of us, like this, is just our natural state. You know, we we just do that. Why? Because whatever we are strong, we 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 appear weak so that the weak can attune with that level and then we can bring them up to our strength and then whenever we feel weak we appear strong so that you know that, that goes without saying there but we have to shield ourselves sometimes from the uh corruption and the bullshit and and the fucking corrupted zombie zombified egotistical crazy maniacal fucks out there that, that seek to prey upon your weakness. And this is also something that's coming to a head for me in my personal experience. And, and whatever it may be, so be it. If I, if I have to, you know, do whatever I need to do. So that, so that, you know, people can have a shock to their system. Then so be it. Because I'm kind of past the point right now of playing nice guy or playing subtle. 
So if you're going to come at me with something, then you better be willing to reciprocate that. And it's going to come back full on. So this is just a micro of the macro that I am engaging. Because I'm engaging uh, a lot of deeper level uh, essences and spirits and uh, mentalities that uh, have been waiting a long time to engage, as have I. Powerful. I've watched this video before and it didn't do what it did to me today. You hear what I'm saying? And this is proof that you're always at different frequencies. You're exactly. always at different levels. There's certain things that may be useful to you at certain times and certain times it may not be useful to you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm going to put up the video uh, with the chat I did with the Awakened Brain. But it's like a two-hour video. Um so I mean, I'll probably upload these first uh, and a couple of other videos I want to upload first and then I'll upload, uh, you know, that chat, which I thought was uh, was powerful, man. It was great. And, and Check I it out. resonate with the Awakened Brave the way I did in this video before. And again, mm -hmm. we all change. We all go through different, we play a different, a different song and it's just the way it is. Don't exactly. judge it all by its color. In actuality, man. Uh, that's that. But, uh, Yeah, I look forward to that for sure. It's a like I've been saying, it's a refinement that's going on here. The twenty twenty vision, it's a refinement so that we can access this. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the card that I want to share that I pulled. You know how fucking crazy that is? <laughs> that almost looks like Devil's Tower in the background. Like, what the fuck? It's fucking mad. Mad is in. I'm glad that it came about. So I'll read from that. The bear, keywords. Brute strength, power, ferocity. Yup. The bear card symbolizes brute strength lurking beneath the surface. Since the bear is one of the few animals able to walk upright, many cultures consider the bear to have a special connection to humans. And uh, I'm going to connect a little bit deeper with this. Uh, Probably in later videos, but the bears have intimate connections with humans, and this the, uh, intimately ties back into our disconnect with uh, "quote unquote" nature, because uh, the bears are. Truly, like our deepest allies in uh, helping us to burrow and to uh, create um, constructs uh, with with the earth, also to uh, protect. On a related note, there are countless stories 
of humans turning into bears. Mm. Perhaps the most famous of these is the Greco-Roman myth about how Hera shapeshifted the nymph Callisto. Uh, I've read different stories, actually. Into a bear after she bore a son named Arcos to Hera's husband, Zeus. When Arcas hmm, inadvertently pursued his mother in bear form, Zeus protected mother and son by transforming them into constellations. Yeah, that's not accurate. <laughs> At least from the stories I read, is that uh, Zeus had an affair with the mother and uh, as Hera was about to catch him, Zeus transformed her into a bear. And then the mother's son killed the bear, not knowing that it was his mother, of course. But then after killing the bear, the bear transformed back into his mother. And that's when Zeus put them up into the heavens as the constellations minor and major Ursa Major the great bear and Ursa Minor the little bear Norse sagas also tell of a group of warriors who fought with ferocity. It was whispered that they actually turned into bears. This is the uh, the berserk mode. The Wolverine berserk. Centuries later, to go berserk. <laughs> means to rage like a beast. Mm. Yeah, so that's that. So yeah. I'll be seeing y'all soon. <laughs> On one level or another. I'll be feeling you. Peace.